Hey, what's going on guys? This is Paul from Prior Witness. Today, we're going to go over the differences between the dual rectifier on the Headbrush MX-5 and the real thing. Let's do it. Well, what'd you think? So we did three of these. If you're curious, well, if we're only comparing the dual rectifier and the MX-5 together, then how come there's three? Well, that's because one of them actually goes into the mixing board direct. So the MX-5 I've got going directly into my mixing board and then into my audio interface. And then another, the other two tests were using the MX-5 as a preamp um, into a real amplifier, in this case, the dual rectifier itself. So instead of using the dual rectifier's tone, we replaced it with what the MX-5 thinks it should be. And then the last one, or one of the ones I should say, um, was the real thing, obviously. Uh, so, you know, which one do you think it is? Um, I, that's what I'm curious. If, if I fooled you at all, or if, if you're, you're thinking in your brain, oh, this is how it's definitely gonna sound, right? Um, I, I'm curious to which one you think it is. So comment below, uh, let me know which one you thought was what, um, A, B, or C, um, and, and just give your best guess. And then if, if you really feel like falling flat on your face in front of everybody, I'm curious to think, uh, curious to see if you got it right, or if you were just flat out wrong, you totally got it wrong. Um, why, what, and first off, before I get into why I did this, let me uh, go through the signal chain real quick. Because I admit, there are a few things going on here. It's not just straight up, you know, guitar, amp, speaker, record, done. Uh, there's a few other things going on here. Uh, I decided to take a mixing approach. There's no right or wrong way to do this. I mean, I'm sure you could make the argument, make the case that I just want the raw tone. I get that. And uh, maybe you're right. For me, I, I thought long and hard about this, and for me, the reason why I did what I did was because I wanted to get a perspective of what these would sound like in a mix. Um, that's how most of us hear music anyways at the end of the day. We're not hearing it in our bedrooms when we're practicing, we are. Uh, we're not hearing it when we're practicing with our band, um, and it's coming out raw that way too. It's what your audience hears. Um, and when you're releasing music and you're putting it on all these different platforms or when you're playing in front of a live audience and it's coming out of those PA speakers, what is everyone going to be hearing? That is what I was going for. Uh, so I did go the full mixing route rather than getting it as raw as possible. Uh, now, even with that being said, I kept everything the same. I did not tweak anything. I made sure everything was step by step the exact same. The panning levels were exactly the same. Uh, the volume levels were the only thing I did have to tweak. And we'll get into that here in a second. Um, and I also utilized some post EQ, post compression, all those fancy things that you normally do when you're doing a mix. Uh, had a guitar bus, all that fun stuff uh, to make sure everything uh, sat in the mix okay. Um, for the guitars themselves, there really there wasn't any post EQ to be honest with you, unless you count the IRs that I used. So. We'll go into the signal chain real quick. So how did I do this? Well, for the MX, uh, MX-5 going in directly into my mixing board, uh, which hopefully you see a fancy picture of that in its dirty gloriousness, 
Um, that was then going into my audio interface, which was then going into my Windows computer, which is running Reaper right now. And I'm not using any of the internal cabs uh, in the MX-5, and I didn't use the internal cabs at any point throughout this song. So I actually used Torpedo Wall of Sound uh, for the IR loader. Uh, I didn't actually use any of the cabs from them. Uh, I actually used IRs, uh, and I got it over here. I got the Jens Bogren um, IR pack uh, for rhythm and lead, and I took uh, one of my favorite IRs from each pack and, and blended those together. So let me take you through the chain. Now that I've kind of went into the software portion of it. The chain is, I try to keep it as simple as possible. Um, so the head rush unit, I'm looking down here uh, at my pedal board, which is to my feet here, uh, so you can't see it on my camera. Well, maybe you can now, it'll show the picture of it. But you got the head rush there. Then from the head rush, depends on which one I was doing. Um, if I was going, you know, if you were just hearing the dual rectifier, it was really just a pass through. Um, I didn't want to unplug any cables or anything, so it was just a pass through. Nothing fancy going on there. So if that happened to taint the sound a little bit, um, I don't think so. I, I plug cables in and out with my own ears to try and tell the difference. I can't tell the difference, but maybe there is. I don't know. So then it's going into the dual rectifier in the front. Um, and then the cabinet is actually going into a torpedo cabinet, uh, an IR, uh, not an IR loader, a torpedo cabinet loader. It's an attenuator. It's a load box. It's a DI box. The torpedo captor uh, is what that is. And then from there, that's going into my mixing board. And then from the mixing board into the audio interface. And it kind of works the same way when using the MX-5 as a preamp. The only difference there is instead of going into the front of the amp, the MX-5, excuse me, is going into the effects loop of that amplifier, the effects return. So if you go out of the MX-5 or at the end of your pedal chain directly into the effects return loop, you have essentially replaced the preamp of your amplifier with whatever the MX-5 is doing. And in this case, we replaced the actual dual rectifier with a preamp version of, of that uh, from the MX-5. If you really want to get technical, I, I guess, um, there would be some differences there. We should have expected it because the rectifier that I own is a 2003 model. It is a three channel dual rectifier. It's not multi-watt, it's 100 watt across the board. Uh, the one in the MX-5 is supposed to be emulating a 1992 dual rectifier. I didn't know what channel it was emulating though, so I had to make a judgment call on this. So I picked channel two uh, and I ran through all three of the, the modes because on the MX-5 you do have raw, vintage, and modern, which is exactly the same as channels two and three on the dual rectifier, which are raw, vintage, and modern. Um, which one to use? I made a judgment call. Um, you know, channel two is, you know, channel three, they, they have subtle differences, but they're so subtle. Um, to the trained ear, there is going to be differences. There's more saturation, more harmonics in channel three than there is in channel two. Um, but I went with channel two, just for the heck of it, I guess. Uh, no rhyme or reason. I just picked one. Um, and I went with that channel. I stuck with that channel. I didn't want to be flip flopping between channels either. So, all the sounds that you heard on the real amplifier were from channel two on the raw vintage and then modern settings. The reveal is this. A, that was the real thing. Uh, and then B was the MX-5 being used as a preamp into the dual rectifier. And then C was the MX-5 into a mixer. And you heard not too much of that. I didn't like it. I didn't think it was that great. It did have its own flavor though. Uh, I'll give it, I'll give it that. And if to your ears, you thought C sounded pretty good, I'm happy for you. Um, you know, at the end of the day, just by listening to this video, the MX-5 sounds pretty darn good. Um, pretty close to the real thing. And in fact, I would argue that in my experiment that I just conducted, the MX-5 being used as a preamp into my real amplifier as opposed to just using the regular amplifier sounded better, which is crazy. Um, but it was, uh, it was nice to hear that though, because um, I like the JCM-800, for example, and I love the Vox AC-30, and I've always thought about going out and either trying to find some money, you know, scrounge up some money to actually buy those amps, or at least find some amp in the box that are dedicated to sounding like those and using those. Um, but after using this MX-5 and then, you know, just doing this experiment, I think really showed me that, you know what, it sounds pretty darn good. Um, but there's nothing wrong with having some variety either, right? So just it just really depends on what you're going for. Uh, I really appreciate you sticking around, and, and if you're listening this far, thank you so much. 
Uh, hope you learned something. Hopefully your your ears uh, learned something too. That hey, maybe that MX-5 isn't all that bad. It's pretty. It's a pretty good purchase. Um, if if or maybe you're wondering if it's even worth a darn. You know, you you haven't really pulled the trigger and you're wondering if it's even worth a darn. So uh, the tones out of that thing are pretty pretty good. So well, with that thanks a lot, guys. Keep on rocking, and we'll see you around.